Welcome everyone to another episode of Ask Octopus, where I answer your interesting questions from the week. Derek, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Bob. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm recording this the day after the 4th of July, so still waking up and uh, still recovering from the day before after all the fireworks and all that other stuff. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, a lot of fireworks. It sounded like... Uh, like you, it's like when you watch those old war movies. It's kind of like with that they had that background noise. That's kind of what it sounded like all night. Here, <laughs> yeah, we we have that, um, and it's weird. Obviously, we've got Guy Fawkes Night, um, yeah. which it's funny because I wasn't really aware that it, I thought it was something that was everywhere. Um, so obviously, it's funny. Like um, so, on the fifth of November, we have a massive uh, firework event, and it's actually to celebrate someone trying to set fire to Westminster. Um, <laughs> That's a weird yeah, way to yeah, celebrate. <laughs> Guy Fox basically tried to blow up Westminster. I'm like, yeah, let's have a night of fireworks. Uh, <laughs> we stopped him. <laughs> All right, cool. So today I'm going to answer this particular question that's come up a lot, um, especially with Octopus Cloud. And that is how will tel tentacles running on-premise connect to Octopus Cloud? Uh, or you can flip that on its head and say, how will Octopus Cloud connect to my servers on-premise? You get this question a lot, Derek? I do. Um, I do. It's funny. Um, obviously, everyone just kind of sort of defaults to listening tentacles, and particularly with cloud, um, you do see, obviously, people need to think, wait a minute, I need to nap how many through? Um, yeah. So like that, it, yeah, it definitely comes up pretty regularly. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, yeah, you mentioned listening tentacles. So what I want to do is, unfortunately, this is going to be less of a demo and more of a little bit of a presentation. Uh, but I want to take a step back and kind of, talk through what our different communication modes are for tentacles, and then hopefully provide you with some scenarios so you can make a more informed decision as to what you want to do. So first up, Derek, you mentioned listening tentacles, and these connect as an inbound connection. And so the Octopus server, let me get my little pointer up. So the Octopus server itself, it's connecting to the tentacle agent. And it's less resource intensive because the tentacle is just saying, I'm just going to sit here until someone tells me to do work, um, as opposed to the other one, which is pulling tentacles, and we'll get to in just a little bit. Um, but Derek, have you had much experience where our users have been using listening tentacles with Octopus Cloud? Um, I have, actually. I've had a few. Okay. Um, I tend to find the uh, polling is more the, yeah. uh, the go-to. Um, but yeah, you do find... Um, the, the, I, I noticed that when we started having our static IP, um, mm -hmm. so with cloud you can put, so I noticed that the, the listing tentacles um, tended to be a little bit, uh, tended to kind of take off a little bit, mainly because you could then fix it to IP as well as that. But obviously, Octopus is built to be, you know, to be um, communicated over the public internet as well, so it's all super safe. But just yeah. obviously, like, additional security is always good. Absolutely. So we have listening tentacles, and then on the flip side of that, we have polling tentacles. And I just realized I used the same image. But ah. in this particular case, the tentacle agent, what it's going to do is it's going to reach out to the Octopus server itself. And it's going to do that every five seconds. And so it's connecting on an outbound port up to the server, checking to see, hey, is there work for me to do? Is there work for me to do? Uh, think of like uh, those old movies, again, where kids are in the back seat and they're asking their dad who's driving, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Um, because of that, it is a little bit more resource intensive because it's constantly making those connections to check out if there's any work. Um, the down, the, sorry, so that's the downside. The upside to that is that we don't know, we don't need to know any of the IP addresses or anything like that of the server itself. So with listening tentacles, we need to know how Octopus server is going to get from this, from here onto that onto that tentacle. So it needs to have that connection and go right through like your firewall and everything like that. That's why we have to have an inbound port. But with polling tentacles, we don't need to know that IP address. Like Octopus Cloud doesn't need to know that IP address. All it needs to know is that, hey, I'm gonna have a tentacle and it's gonna connect to me every five seconds and it's gonna check for work. So Derek, you mentioned that, that everything is very secure. And the way that we do that is a couple of things. We do what's known as a two-way trust. So the server will only connect to tentacles it trusts, and tentacles will only connect to servers it trusts. So even with polling tentacles, if a polling tentacle connects to a server and the server doesn't trust that tentacle, so it goes, I don't recognize this tentacle at all, then it's going to reject that connection. And we do that because every server, 
and every tentacle, they have their own unique certificate. And so what they do is they exchange their thumbprints back and forth. And that's the way that it does kind of handles that connection. And well, I also want to mention proxy servers. So this was an interesting case uh, where a customer asked, I have a DMZ and I would really like everything to go through the DMZ first. I was like, okay, you know, we can do something like that. So we have the support for proxies. And what this can do is, so is this is your Octopus server, and let's say you have your other servers that are sitting out here in your secure location. Well, Octopus server, it can connect to the web proxy, and then it, that can go through the server itself. That can go to the server itself. So you have this nice little line of demarcation, so to speak. Um, a couple of big notes, no SSL offloading. We, want, we need that connection to be secure all the way through. And we only support HTTP proxies, no SOX proxies. So those are some big caveats to that. Proxy servers, you've got to love them, Bob. Oh, I know. It, it, they work great for very specific use cases, and I, I can totally get why people use them. Um, but other times, man, they can they definitely add in a bit of complexity on top of everything. Um, so what I want to do for this last bit is I kind of want to walk you through a couple scenarios. So by default, we always recommend listening to tentacles. It's less resource intensive. And if you're going with HA, it's also um, a lot easier because with polling tentacles with HA, it has to connect to every single one of your nodes. So if you had eight nodes at this point, it would have to query all eight nodes every five seconds just to check to see if, that, if there's work for it to do because the load is distributed amongst all your HA nodes. So with listening tentacles, it's a lot easy because, excuse me, a lot easier because the node, once it picks up work, what it will do is it'll go ahead and it will say, okay, um, I need to connect to this, this tentacle, so I'm just gonna go ahead and connect to it. So it doesn't have to deal with anything like that. However, if you're doing something where you have a dynamic IP address, um, for example, I connect my on-premise infrastructure up to Octopus Cloud, well, I don't have a business line, I just have a, you know, just a regular residential line. Well, that IP address could change on me at any given point. I don't wanna worry about that. So polling tentacles, definitely the way to go. If you don't want to open inbound ports on your firewall, um, polling tentacles is, you know, that's definitely the way to go as well. Um, a lot of our customers, they also deploy to their customers, their customers on premise, and their customers don't want to open up inbound ports. So again, outbound ports, much easier to get open. So polling tentacles, if you have to go through a DMZ, um, I would default to proxy with listening. Um, but if you don't want to store your IP address in the cloud, then polling tentacles, or you don't want to store your IP address in the cloud and you have to want to go through a DMC, then proxy with polling. So hopefully that covers all of the various scenarios that you need to go through. Biggest tip I would give people here is, particularly with the, the polling tentacles, is um, make sure you, if you remove it from the Octopus server, um, make sure you remove it. It's the biggest thing I can honestly say is like, make sure you remove it from um, the server because quite often sometimes servers live on um, or if you can take it down as part of your teardown process. The reason is, 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 is obviously with, it does kind of, and if it doesn't have, like you said, with the, the two-way trust, um, that tentacle doesn't actually know that it's no longer trusted. So it just keeps every yeah. You know, every time it's just constantly trying to do it. It's almost like a mini DOS. Um, yeah. So we're post, just try and keep that nice and tight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Because yeah, with listening tentacles, if you remove the if you remove the registration, it's it's the, the server's just not going to connect to it. It's never going to try to connect to it. So it's it's perfectly that's fine. It. You no know, resources. But yeah, absolutely. With polling tentacles. That it has no idea that it's been deregistered. So to, you know, yeah, so it's fine when you only have, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40, up, you know, up to 100. But, you know, I've had some customers who've got 2,500, um, and it's just like, yeah, and they remove five, and it's just, you know, that's 500 machines that are pulling every five seconds, and, yeah, it's just, a, it really has an impact on occasionally. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the nice thing about it is we definitely provide you a variety of options, so you have your choice on how you want to connect to Octopus Cloud from your on-premise infrastructure. Uh, we don't want to tell you how to do it. We just want to provide you with the necessary options and the information so you can make the best decision for your particular scenarios. All right, cool. Thank you very much, Derek, for joining me today. Um, we got a brand new email address. So if you want to email us any questions you have, please reach out to us at tam at octopus.com. Um, if it is an actual support question, you need us, you need to get going again, we'll probably send you back over to support. 
not a big deal. It's really easy for us to do, but we're here to help you out. And if you want to join us on Slack, go ahead and reach us at octopus.com slash Slack. We love to talk to you there. Thank you, Derek, for joining me today. Cheers, Bob. Yep. Guys, have a great day. Bye.